Stay over there or do you need help? We're getting it. I got it. Yes. All right. So your central nervous system. On your study guide, this is where you're going to write it. Let's go. That's it. All right, your central nervous system is part of the nervous system consisting of the brain and the spinal cord. What type of neurons are located in our brain and spinal cord, Elijah? Inner neurons. This is where all of them are helmed. Last week we talked about neurons, afferent, efferent, all that stuff, right? This week we're talking about all the systems and how they actually come together and function together. Next week we're doing the brain, which is the hardest unit of all the biology, which we're building to. So keep in mind that next week is a very, very big week, um, and we're going to get there. So your spinal cord, which is on your study guide. long bundle. By the way, on your study guide, you have this information. If it's the most important content of the week, you should be writing it down. Right, Bayarn? Perfect. Let's get it down. So, uh, the spinal cord is a long bundle of neurons. It carries messages to and from the body and the brain that is responsible for very fast life-saving reflex. Who can explain to me what a reflex is? What do we got? Maya? It's um, part of the autonomous. Sounds like automatic, but not. Autonomic system? Autonomic. Autonomic. Yeah, nomic. It's part, so it's something you do without, it's like, if you know the definition of a reflex, it's something you do without even thinking. Perfect. So what does that mean? Where does it go? If you do with, if a reflex is done without thinking, where does the message go, Jackson? You talk about the system, really. No, like when we talk about like a reflex, your spinal, like, how does a reflex work? Where does the information get processed? Think about it. We're reflex. Re I sat up here and I tried hitting underneath my knee. Okay? And it, oh, I'm killing it right now. Like I'm hitting it perfectly. This is boss. Okay? This never happens when I'm teaching it. It's fine. So, <laughs> when I'm hitting underneath my knee and the reflex, am I moving? Am I telling my foot to move? Look at this. Like, this is just, I've never done. Thank you for being here today, Mr. Thomas. Like, this doesn't happen. Usually, mostly the time I just bruise my kneecap. Okay, so am I telling my foot to move when I hit underneath my knee? Hello? The answer is what? No. No. So if I'm not thinking about it, what is processing that information? Who with a hand? Morgan, the spinal cord. Okay, so the information goes from my knee straight to my spinal cord, and then the information is sent directly back to the area to have the reflex. Who can raise your hand and tell me why we have reflexes? I've already talked to you, Elijah. Max. It's Okay, but why? Oh, it's help us survive. Help us survive, absolutely. Remember, if we're being, if we lose our leg because we don't have that reflex of pulling it back quickly, a bear can eat us quickly, yes? Will be easy bear target. So, spinal cord reflexes, okay? It's the super highway of your brain. All right, the reflex arc. Now, please listen. There are your three neurons that we studied all of last week. Now we're going to connect them and we call the reflex arc. So, of course, you have the basic definitions, which you should be writing down. Okay? But I do want to explain what the reflex arc, which is just above. So right now you're just writing down your three neurons, which we covered last week. This week is very much so layering on, taking the information we did last week and adding more information. Who can explain to me what a sensory neuron is and not read the definition to me? Because we covered it last week. I see you. I'm going to force someone else to talk to me. Uh, what do you got, David? It's like the sense, or like the, um, I just forgot what I was going to say. You're okay. Sensory neuron. What do you, you need a break? You need a buddy? Yeah. Okay, who can help out? T. Uh, neurons in your brain saying, or like basically telling you what it feels. What you Absolutely. What was the example we used in class, T? Uh, Yes, absolutely. Nico kicks me in the shin. Okay, my shin's gonna be like, what the hell? Nico just kicked us. We gotta tell the brain. Sensory neurons. What's a fancy term for a sensory neuron, Ella? Um. Oh, that's afferent. Afferent. How do we remember it? Um, because afferent comes first. Yes. Hey, you have to send the information to your brain 
before you can process that information. Who can explain to me how motor neurons work? Covered it last week. Patrick. Uh, it responds to what's happening around them. Okay. And what do they do? What's their thing? Uh, it tells you what to do. Oh, it tells who? It tells what? Uh, body. Okay, by doing, going where? Uh, to the arms. To the arms. So yeah. What is in your arms that allow your arms to do arm things? Arm things. What is in your arm that makes your arm do things? Like, I don't have big ones, but like, I sure am trying at the gym. Yes, muscles. Motor neurons control what, Patrick? Muscles. Yes, they're the ones that are actually controlling the muscles. They're the ones um, who are telling the muscles what to do. Okay? Next week, when we're in the brain, we're going to talk about the parietal lobe which helms all of your motor neurons and sends the motor neurons to your muscles. Isn't that exciting how we're layering this information? All right, then you have motor neurons. What are motor, who can tell me motor neurons? Thank you, Alexis, for volunteering. What are motor neurons doing? No, they're not. Efferent neurons are fancy words for which ones? Oh my god, inner neurons. I want inner neurons. <laughs> <laughs> Everett is motor. I'm so sorry. Everett is motor. You're totally right, Alexis. I want inner neurons. Tell me about inner neurons. Perfect. Where are the two places we get have the highest density of inner neurons? Perfect. All right. So what we're doing in the reflex arc, okay, if you write this in your application of your reflex arc, okay? Your sensory neurons, also known as afferent neurons, send messages. Look at here for two seconds. I'm obviously not erasing it anytime soon. Look over here and I will give you plenty of time, but I want you to see the connections and listen to how I explain it, please. So, your uh, reflex arc, your sensory neurons, your afferent neurons are sending information to your interneurons. The inner neurons are most, when we talk about the reflex arc, is it going to our brain? If it's a reflex? No. No, it's not. It ha it's going to our what? Spinal cord. So your inner neurons and your spinal cord are the only ones processing this information. It's important that you are distinguishing it's going to your spinal cord, not your brain, because it's a? Reflex. reflex. So it's sensory neurons to your inner neurons and your spinal cord. And then your spinal cord sends motor or efferent neurons, and that's when your reflex occurs, okay? As I'm hitting, now that he's gone, of course it's not working, damn it. Okay? All right, I'm hitting it, and my motor neurons are the ones moving the foot. That is your reflex arc. That's what I would put down for your application. What do you need, Zach? Cool. All right. Neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the, uh, is the ability to constantly change both the structure and function of a cell involved in a trauma. Now, neuroplasticity is obviously in traumatic events, but it's also in like normal events. When you were first learning how to write, you spent a lot of time thinking about the movement of your hand. Would you agree? Hello? Yeah. Yes, you're like, I gotta go. Think of how painful learning how to write was for you and how terrible you were at it. Some of you haven't improved much, but. Not even you. Huh? <laughs> Damn. I'm sorry, what, Zach? What? What? I cannot read your notes. Perfect. Oh then you shouldn't depend on my notes then. So, excuse me. When we're talking about neuroplasticity, it's the ability to start doing things faster and more effectively. Like the first time you ride a bike, for instance, it was probably super scary and you were probably really bad and you fell off your bike at some point, yes? Hopefully you all fell off the bike at some point. It's a good learning moment in your life. <laughs> anyway, now if you got on a bike, do you sit there and say, okay, we're going to push off. <laughs> we're going to pedal as fast as we can and we're not going to shake. We're just going to like go with it. Neuroplasticity is your body's ability to kind of remember things, learn things, and evolve, and use it in an effective way. What? To a degree. To a degree. But it's your muscles, it's your motor neurons that remember and use it. So muscle memory is a good connection. 
but it's more, it's the neurons knowing how that movement happens. So like Morgan's always in the water. She swims like a boss, okay? She's going this weekend. She's going to crush it this weekend, okay? I used to be a swimmer, and I used to be pretty good. Theoretically, I could do most of the movements. Will it be pretty? No, it won't be. Oh my god, my butterfly would look like I'm drowning. <laughs> but I would like moving, but like not very good. Okay? So my body would still remember it. I would still be better than someone who's never done the butterfly. I'd be better than someone who's never done like the back stroke. I can't do breast strokes. There's nothing about this leg. Like it's so illegal. It's oh, it's so illegal, it's awful. There's no like streamline, like nothing. It's awful. Huh? <laughs> not if you're doing it legally. Well, no, it's with two natural kick No, it's not. Like, he's your feet don't turn off that way. Yeah, it's just terrible. It's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Live a uh, normal life. I'm fine with it. Okay, but neuroplasticity is, even though I haven't been in the water and swam 300, like 100 yards, like in a real stroke, I could get in there and I'd probably beat any of you who've never swam before. But it would not be anywhere near where I used to be. That's because my muscles would essentially remember it be the neuroplasticity. All right, done, done. Peripheral. <coughs> Mind your way, because I'm like honey pumping. Mind your way. Nice. That was the answer I wanted, David. Thank you. How'd it go, Miss Bush? Killed it? <laughs> you have no confidence or not? I have confidence, I'm probably going to fail it, so I'm trying not to have confidence. Do you want this in here, too? Yes, I want everything in there, please. I just Goodbye, so you do finish your do now? Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. All right, see you. So your peripheral nervous system, this is the stuff that's going to sound very much like um, Monday. Did we do it together? Yeah, Monday's board, which we're going to fill out here. It's when it's everything outside the central nervous system. It's broken down into two components, the somatic, of course, and the autonomic. So now I'm on your way. I hope you see that we are just crushing your study guide right now. <laughs> and we're about to fill in number three here on your focus. And number four on your focus today. We're crushing it. Because I want you to have a nice three-day weekend because I'm not going to be thinking about you. And I don't want you thinking about me. I'll be sleeping. Apparently, I'm getting sick. It's the saddest thing. When I'm sick, I'm like death. It's the saddest, and most pathetic thing you've ever seen. Miss Minna, have you ever had to have a sub in one of your classes? Yes. A sub? Yes. It's the worst. <laughs> so dramatic. It's so, so dramatic. So it's so southern only in your most dramatic moments. The subs don't know how to use the computer. And then when they try to put your video on, it doesn't work. I record videos and you watch my videos. And you do what I tell you to do. <laughs> <laughs> but they can't never figure it out. <laughs> I'm doing as best as I can, Zach. What would you like me to do? But no, under my own control, last year I had a bunch of absences because last year was like a big year. My cousin got married in California. Um, my mom turned 60, so I had to go on a cruise, which was awful. I'm not a cruiser, people. I'm not a cruiser. No, I, well, no. When you have to pay for them, they're super expensive, and you're stuck on a boat with, like, 5,000 dirty people who don't know how to, like, go through a buffet line without touching everything, and it's disgusting, and you can just feel the germs piling on you. It's really disgusting. Oh, great. It's something that 5,000 other people before me bathed in who are disgusting, and it's just awful. So, no thank you. And then, oh, I took a day off for Adele. You would have done. It was in Miami, and it was legit. You took more than So, Toby got sick. I didn't take a day off of Toby. McCray took days off of Toby. Uh, you weren't here, like, after our exam. Yeah, you're damn right I wasn't. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to prepare people for AP exams? We had the sub that didn't care, and the southern one, like with the beard. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. The one that's dry, in driver's ed, and he didn't yeah. care, it was so funny. The best sub. He was telling stories about how he was using the beard, bro. Wait, what's this? Oh, yeah. Like, 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 like,
Edmonds Heelys. Oh my god, I'm recording this. We're done. We're not. We are not. We are not. We about it's Heelys in elementary school. Wait, if you should have done the country stuff before, it's like the cost. They cut yourself. He tells these stories on his rap parties. Why can't they just sit there and just get paid and not talk? He tells us about how Mattress Firm is like a Fortune 500 country. He's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here we go. So, motor, uh, sensory pathway, motor pathway. So, your somatic nervous system is the one that actually hounds all your afferent and efferent neurons. Okay? Uh, in your, from, it takes the information to your central nervous system, which would be your afferent and sensory, and then it sends the information from your uh, inner neurons or your central nervous system to your muscles, which would be your uh, efferent neurons. With that being said, when we're talking about messages going to your central nervous system, we call it your sensory pathway, which makes a lot of sense because it's your sensory neurons going to your central uh, nervous system. So sensory pathways are nerves coming from the sensory organs to the central nervous system consisting. I would write in that box your application, your afferent or only afferent and uh, or sensory neurons here. I'm so hungry. So motor neurons, very similar to that of course, except they are going to be motor neurons or efferent neurons. And these are nerves coming from the central nervous system to the voluntary muscles, so the movements you choose to do. So when I go to the gym and I do this all day, okay, that is voluntary, that's what I'm doing. So, for your application for your motor neurons, I would say only efferent or motor neurons are here. I'm so sick. What are you talking about? Sorry, my weird juices right now. What is that? Pedialyte. Pedialyte. What did she say? It's Pedialyte. Needs the electrolytes, I guess. <laughs> it's like, this, it's like you're making for babies who are sick. Because it has like a bunch of like... <laughs> I know, my darling. <laughs> I know. What? Have you ever seen any Yawkins? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's Rondo. Oh, yeah. Alright, oh, are we good? Okay, good. Alright. What? It's an easy week. Hopefully you see that we're just taking everything from last week and just learning it on. All right, here we go. So your autonomic nervous system is a division of the peripheral nervous system that is in control of all your involuntary. Who can raise your hand and tell me what does involuntary mean? All this is the information I covered last week. Avery, would you like to participate? Yes. What are involuntary, Avery? Breathing. Breathing, yes. What else would be? Oh, I hate the damn blinking thing, huh? Thinking. They, no, that's weird, no. It's a different thing. Huh? Swallowing. Digesting. You can't really control that yesterday for saying something. Kind of, yeah. It's a whole different level. Uh, growing of fingernails and hair. No one's saying, grow. 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 Let me digest. I would throw that into the digestion. I mean, it's not the breakdown. <laughs> That I was, you know, originally thinking, but that would be. If you want to throw an esophagus, let's do it. You sound pretty passionate about it, so let's just throw it in there. Esophagus would be one. What else? Heartbeat. Heartbeat, if you recovered. I hope we covered that real quick, didn't we? Heart rate. Yeah. Ooh, there's a mucus. The drip, yeah. Post nasal drip. Welcome back. Uh, yeah. I think that's good enough. I think we've really covered enough. All right, anyway. So, it processes both your sensory and your uh, motor neurons. What? Would a twitch be an autonomic? Okay, so twitches are a little bit different. Yes, they're not thought of, but it's a response to something. So, it's kind of like a little weird thing. All right. Gabriel, I do need that earbud off, though. All right, so sympathetic division, your fight or flight, is part of the autonomic nervous system. It's responsible for reacting to stressful events and bodily arousal. Okay, so anytime, who here deals well with pressure? Good. Who here literally crumbles under pressure and it makes life so hard? Good. It's good to be aware of at least what you are, whether you're good with pressure or not. 
Hopefully, you plan accordingly, right, Patrick? Are you a planner? No? No. No? So you fall into stressful events on a regular basis? Oh, cool, cool. Glad you are, you know, coping well, it seems. All right, so your sympathetic nervous system is going to get you uh, ready to go. It's going to, uh, it's going to gear you up. So if a bear is coming at you, the, oh my God, here we go, is a sympathetic. Okay, so flip over your, I'm going to give you plenty of time. Stop what you're doing. I'm going to give you plenty of time. As you can see, we're having a low-key day, yeah? We're getting things done, but low-key. Flip over your focus, and on number four, you're going to see sympathetic, parasympathetic. I'm going to fill this in here in a second. Sympathetic is going right next to sympathetic. Um, gets you going. I would write, like, in the box or near, it gets you going. Turn off your phone, whoever you are. Is that you, Alyssa? Yeah. Turn it off or mute or whatever. Gets you going. And in your parasympathetic box, I would write calms you down. You need to keep those two things separate. I'm going to fill that in here in a minute or two for you. Um, so you'll be fine. But it's important that you keep it separate, which one calms you down. Because there's like three questions on your test about which one, like about parasympathetic and sympathetic and the differences. So, going back to your study guide, I'm giving you plenty of time to write down what you wanted to write down, so please finish that. Your parasympathetic gets you back to normal, okay? It allows you to reach that epitome that everyone wants, where nothing's wrong, nothing is horrible, you're not too full, you're not hungry, you're in that perfect spot. So they balance each other out. When one is engaged, the other one is trying to level it out. What? You use bears in a lot of your examples. I do. I, I, I don't psychologically think I have a, fair, a fear of bears, but maybe in a subconscious level, I think I do. However, it's important to know that I don't go into the woods. I'm not an outdoorsy girl, so I don't I know if bears are going to get me. There aren't really many wild bears. I think I'll be okay. I think they will be okay. Every once in a while, there's like an animal that escapes the zoo. <laughs> yeah. So, you never know. Wouldn't it be funny if I get eaten by like a black bear? Yeah, like, <laughs> like channel side. Huh? You have a son. That's what you're worried about? Is oh, damn, no, we have no, a sub. No, no, we have the country sub. No, no, we have the country sub. Oh, God. Oh, for the rest of the year. By the way, Bennett got eaten by a bear. A bear. Oh, All right. Who is this guy? The most, the Mongols are very nice. Wait, I think he's he's the he's the the life part of the best. Oh my gosh, he's my singer coach's son. Yeah, I think, doesn't he, is Wendy the right person? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is he the guy who wears the hat all the damn yeah. time? Yeah, yeah. 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 He, he, he was like, he no one him. knows, yeah, like, not even my best friends know what, uh, uh, What's like a kill man? Government affiliation. I, I'm with. And we're like, we all know. <laughs> are we done, Jackson? Yeah, I'd love to be in his class. Dax, are you good? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Guys, uh, just a friendly reminder, uh, at any time you're more than welcome to take a picture of my PowerPoint if I'm going faster than you're prepared for. You're more than welcome to take a picture of it. Please keep me out of it because, like, you don't need a photo of me up <laughs> or whatever stupid thing I'm doing to try to get you the content. So, um, you're more than welcome to take a photo. Okay, please take a note before you start writing anything down. This is parasympathetic. This is sympathetic. On the back of your focus, which you just kind of labeled, you know, gets you going or calms you down, make sure you're writing these in the right column, correct? What? Why did you do salivation? Salivation. salivation. Like that dry mouth feeling when you're super stressed? Yeah, what's the point of that? It's just how your body responds. Well, think about it. I mean... When you have uh, very little saliva in your mouth, you're more likely to go out of your way to find water and it gets your body like, oh. more engaged to go. So, sympathetic, which is that first column on the back of your focus, which you should be writing these down, dilates pupils and inhibits tear glands. So, when you are and fully engaged, I don't know, if you've ever been in a super, super stressful situation, like a car accident, or when like you're in a really really big like sporting event or something like that like a big big moment okay you will notice you probably can't really cry like if you're ever in like a 
car accident, you're not crying while the car is spinning out. Can we agree? You're terrified and you're screaming and you're like, holy. <laughs> and like, this is happening. And, but you're not crying yet. The crying comes as a reaction. Correct? Okay? So, dilate, uh, dilates pupils and inhibits tear gland. Dilates means the eye open up. Anyone ever had their pupils dilated? I like, oh my God, it's the worst thing in the world. And your pupil, which is the black center of your eye, which we are covering in week six, by the way. Anyway, uh, the pupil, they expand your pupil, which is a hole. It's actually not a thing. And it allows all the light to reach the back of your retina. And if you've ever had your pupils dilated and you go outside, it's one of the most painful experiences of your life, correct? It's really awful. Okay, decrease sal uh, salvation is what I said. Oh, sounds like you're saving your soul from God. Um, what that is is that uh, if you are uncomfortable, like food, sex, water, you remember those are our basic drives. If you have a dry mouth, you're more likely to be more responsive in order to solve that problem. So you have decreased, increased heart rate. Okay, makes sense. The more oxygen you have, the more responsive your muscles are, and essentially the more clear your brain is to help you make those decisions. You have um, dilates bronchi, which means your lungs are now expanding on a bigger way. Okay, so you're breathing deeper, you're breathing much more effectively. Okay, decreases digestive functions. All of a sudden, in a major crisis, you're not thinking, damn, I'm hungry. Right? You're thinking about the task at hand, clean, clear, sharp mind. You're not thinking of like, oh man, it would be delicious to have a PDQ Oreo milkshake right now, which happens to be my fave, fun fact. Okay, is that you? I love it. So good. And at three o'clock, it's like a dollar twenty. It's happy hour. <laughs> at PDQ, it's half a uh, uh, happy hour from three to five. Oh my god, I'm the biggest fat in the world. That in the <laughs> yes, we had to cover it. All right, and when you're super, super stressed in a traumatic experience, no one's like, damn, I got to pee. Because you, uh, your body doesn't focus on those types of things. It just kind of holds on to it. Huh? Like when the actual event like is occurring. Not in the lead up of knowing it's coming and not after it, but the lead up. So you're parasympathetic. When it calms you down. Zach, you better put that phone away. No, you didn't. You Increases saliva, okay? You're increasing it, so all of a sudden you are going constricts pupils, stimulates tear glands. Who here cries when you are stressed? I am that to a T. That is who I am as a person. I am a crier, and I'm, like, really good at it. Like, really, really good at it. I am pretty passionate about it. If I had talent, I would say it's crying. Um, it's pretty great. Uh, I'm a big fan of crying in the shower. <laughs> I feel like, you know, like just cleanse, like just get it out. Every year after my AP World exam, I cry in my shower, and my husband has a little glass of wine ready. Not a little glass, by the way. It's like a gob <laughs> of wine, and I'm just so much better. It's like a cleansing thing, you know? Like sometimes you just need to cry and like let it out, and that allows my body to calm down. Uh, constricts. Okay, everyone here who's ever gotten really upset, all of a sudden your, br your breath gets super constricted and you're like, <sighs> and that whole transition, like you're super upset and then you're like, you're like <sighs> and it's your body trying to say, calm the hell down and trying to limit your breathing uh, to start slowing you down. Uh, increases digestive, okay, after a traumatic event, all you can think about is food. Right? Greasy, fatty food. That is exactly what you want, right? No? Are you a healthy people? No. <laughs> That's gross. All right. And allows for a bladder. Uh, you'll finally have to pee. There you go. All right. We filled that back. All right. If you look at number four, uh, number three on your focus, that's it. Oh, my God. I'm literally giving it to you right now, Jackson. And by the way, I've already given it to you once, so it's easy. We've done this last week. I'm going to sit here so I'm not in the way. You're welcome. I don't care. There's like a little space right there. No, you're fine. You're fine. It's fine. I'll just sit here. We're killing it today. We're getting so much done.
I hope you see that uh, this is really building off of last week, yes? Yes. Hey, bro, what are you smiling about? Please don't smile. <laughs> no one trusts people who smile all the time. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I had Dean last year. I didn't have Jake. I had Dean last year. They are always smiling. But, like, I think they're kind of genuine. No, no, no. So they, there's or never they, like, anything serial wrong. killers. No, there's never, like, you'd be like, do you have a problem with this? You're like, no, it's perfectly fine. Like, it's like... Everything's great. And they have, like, like, like genuine, like, big smiles. It's so funny that Dean was absent and Jake walked in and then he goes, oh, hey, Dean. <laughs> they hate it when you, when you get them wrong. Yeah, because you, you switched them up. Yeah, because they're individual people. Now. Good story. You switched them up. <laughs> and then when Dean calls us, he's like Jacob. It's pretty fun. Cool. <laughs> Zach, do you have a sound? <laughs> no, it's not auto No, no, it's not. Why are you smiling now? <laughs> no, it's autonomic. That's not laughing. I don't know. Go ask a Tate. Are you like so well, conscious? Laughter would be like, Stop it right now. Stop <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, you got this all down? You got the explanations, of course, too, because you wouldn't just write the titles because that would be ridiculous, right, JR? I see you. I see you. Yes, you need the whole explanations, people. Even what do you for the Yes. Peripheral and yeah. central nervous yeah. system. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it says brain and spinal cord, and then it goes to brain and spinal cord. Yeah. Do it. Do it. <laughs> it's too late. Do it. You can write a little arrow. I'll fill. I'll follow. Wherever you look at. It's a Sisters Act reference, by the way. It's fine if you didn't know. <laughs> 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 you only You've never to... seen Sisters Act? No. It's when Whoopi Goldberg pretends to be a nun. Who's Whoopi Goldberg? Oh my god. <laughs> Isn't she on it's that a good one. Wait. I thought she was dead. It's classic. You got this down, Ma. So then she becomes a nun, and then the. The convent that she's at is like losing money and everything's terrible. And then she decides to be the choral director. And she's from like Las Vegas and she adds like a Las Vegas flair to the chorus. And um, the Pope comes to see them because they're like boss. It's a classic film. It's a classic film. The mob's trying to kill her, so they're hiding her in a convent. Surprise, surprise, the mob finds her. Then you have nuns running around Las Vegas. It's classic. Good movie. It's on Netflix, by the way. It was also on HBO. I revisited uh, classic uh, Sisters Act, and there's a Sisters Act two, by the way, which is also amazing. Whoopi Goldberg, back in the habit, is the name of it, and she helps. <laughs> I like you knew this all by heart. It's a classic. I don't know. I really like Back in the Habit. It has um. Erica Badu. She's in it. She's in it. It's good. Oh my god, people. You don't know who Erica Badu is? No. Oh yeah, she's a singer. Yes. You've heard her song, I can't think of the name of that one. I can see her though. I can see her shows. What is that? Anyway. You have more than... What are you doing, T? Are you done? Is everything done? You've written every single thing I have up there. Okay. Every single thing needs to be down. You literally have more than enough time. More than enough time to get it done. What time do you people leave? 12.18. Are we done? No. Oh. What?
it's like assuming that there's 36 hours in the day and like eight days in the week. Like account for how much work you do. Oh my so god. Really, really, you haven't figured out the pattern yet there, Elijah? No. You're literally still drowning in a sea of AP psych and you just can't help yourself. Is it really that bad right now? Exactly. As I literally filled in half of your damn work today. <laughs> today. Come at me, bro. <laughs> this is being recorded. <laughs> Wait, is it Ashley? Yes. It's going on YouTube later, isn't it? No. no. I'm not letting this be done. This is not going on. Wait, please, we have less than one in the day. Eh, this one currently is being recorded, but I think that will end. Where are you recorded? Off the computer? Yes. I think this will be interesting. So there was some person in the other room. You can probably get more views. It's just post this, post this class on YouTube, right? Yeah, I think it started off horribly wrong talking about that stuff. That was a double game. No one appreciating my taste in movies. T throwing some real shade. Damn. Damn. The only reference anyone got. It's fine, T. It's fine. All right, are we done? Yes. Yeah. Well, Avery's done. Get it done. Why wouldn't you just do it? I almost ran out of room, though. I'm so glad. But you didn't. But you didn't. It's okay. Avery, I'm proud of you. Oh, my God. Are you still festering on this, like, amount? How much have you learned in three weeks? How much did you learn <laughs> in AP Psych this year? A lot more than some of you taught me. <laughs> have you learned a lot or not? I have like, yeah, I have learned. I, I have like pretty near photographic numbers. Oh, Eli. I just can't even I'm remember. Perfect. My name's Eli. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I hope you enjoy it twice. Is there it's supposed to be something else in there? I have no idea. Dang. Oh. <laughs> Damn. All right. Are we good? Sydney, are you done? Yes. If you're not, we have no. time. Just the last word. Cool. Stress. All right, here we go. So, no. so what nervous systems engage with your stress? Oh, um, I don't know. It's sympathetic. Yes. All right, here we go. So peeking inside the brain, your first one is being done in clinical studies, and it's called deep lesioning. Wait. What? Wait. Wait, what's what? the definition for clinical What's <laughs> clinical studies? Uh, clinical studies are done on individual patients where research is being conducted. And deep lesion would be like an application of that? Um, it would probably be one of the better ones, yeah. What? Yeah, we literally burn a hole in your brain. That was awful. I thought that was lesions. How does that, like... Deep lesioning. Right here. <laughs> my, my question is, there's lesion, and then you can go deeper, and then you Well, you have the surface of your brain, and then you have the core of your brain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so people yeah, actually let this happen. I'm, I'm yes. assuming this is an experimental trial, right? Yes. Yeah. Which is why it's called a clinical study. Yeah. Wait, so people are just like, yeah... Just like, How about we get there? Let me, let me just address okay. that. Let's go. Okay. All right. Deep I'm lesioning. Sure. Is insert. <laughs> they don't take like healthy oh people inside burning holes in their brain. That's what you just said. No. Deep lesioning. So you insert a thin a wire into the brain, which the electrical current is going to start burning a hole. It destroys the part of the brain, whatever it's touching. Okay? So you're going to see this with a lot of people who have severe narcolepsy. Who can raise your hand and tell me what is narcolepsy? What is narcolepsy, uh, Alexis? Okay. Isn't it when people fall asleep? Yes. It is people who fall asleep all the time. They fall straight into REM. This is all week six. No, week seven. Just kidding. Content. It's fine. Uh, anyway, people who have narcolepsy, a lot of them who have severe narcolepsy do deep lesioning, which they stick a metal wire into your brain and they burn the part of the brain that they think. I think. I don't know. We're not 100% sure. It's not good. <laughs> and they burn that part of the brain. Now. What if they burn the wrong part? Well, let me tell you what I need to tell you. Oh, my God. I can't sit here anymore. This is awful. Cannot be. All right. So when you have deep lesioning, we're obviously burning a part of the brain. We're not exactly sure where everything occurs in your brain. Like, we're not really sure 
where things occur. But we know that if we burn a hole in this specific part of your brain, and your personality was one way, and now it's different, what have we just learned? That something there is controlling that. That is how we use it to learn about the brain. Peeking inside the brain, this whole unit is about finding out what information is helmed where in your brain. If we burn a bunch of cells in one specific area, we now have a better insight into what's happening there. What, Elijah? How is this different from the lobotomy? Lobotomy is when we cut it out. So, like, separating it. Yeah, we literally, like, it's really cool. Um, so with, you better get this down. Do you need this one? Um, ESV? Nice. Oh, with the lobotomy, it's super cool. What we do is we pull down your eyelid. Stop, please. Then we take a hollow needle and go. And it goes in and pops through the back of your eye socket into your brain. And then we stick a metal wire up there and we go. Is that slowly? Yeah. Where? A lobotomy is coming back into fashion, by the way. For what? What does it do? For people with depression, a lot of them are going to lobotomy as well as uh, electrocuting your brain. See ya. And they say psychology is an interesting. Whining about the work still. You've got to be kidding me. No, I I'm right. Uh -huh. There's three. Uh -huh. I like, said one of them. Yeah, we have like, one of them like, I don't know how to pronounce it, like, then I was like, we'll be ahead of them all year. If I have a head of the ketchup, we have a month of your This month is Rosh Hashanah. Yes! I will not be here on Oh, so glad. Day of the 20th. It's up right now. It's so we'll probably it ahead of time, after, whatever you want. Whenever that week comes, I just want to let you know. No, I appreciate it. I'm so excited for you. It's a big deal. It's the new year. I know. It's so exciting. Thank you. Bye, Thank you. It's probably the only one I actually will miss. That's fine. Bye, Max. Bye, bye, bye. This class is enough. It's so different. Oh my god. Last period of the day. Bye, Jackson. Bye, Maya. Have a good day.